Hello, welcome to the Jazz Ranch. Hip cowboys and groovy cowgirls. This is a real ranch here. You can see the, the range and there's real cowboys here. And they do go out on the range and they ride the Broncos and the Bulls at the rodeo and they hang out at the campfire singing bebop tunes. There's no other place you can go where they do that. And you know, we even have retired cowboys here. We call them deranged. <laughs> and you know, actually the Lone Ranger has come here to visit. And he told us the story about the time that he was ambushed. He was with Tonto and they were ambushed by Indians and they were surrounded. And uh, he said to Tonto, well, it looks like my, my dear old friend, looks like we're done for. And you know what Tano said to him? He said, what do you mean we, Kimasabi? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to play a song for you this evening called Little Sunflowers, written by Freddie Hubbard back in 67. And it's a great example of a modal song that you can improvise on using pentatonic scales and play modal type chords and so on. And it's a very easy song to learn, so it's good for beginners as well as intermediate and advanced you could do more things with it. So here we go with a great song. I'm going to give you a tutorial on it later on. Here we go with a great song called Little Sunflower. Here we go. talk about what I played and how you can learn this song to play if you're a beginner. It's very easy. It's an easy melody. It's all on the white notes for the most part and it, um, it's in the key of D minor. Now that actually is F major which should have one flat but in this case the melody does not use the flat. It has um, 
a B natural and the melody goes, let's see. Let's see. see that's a B natural there. So that's the first eight measures. And then that repeats, so it's D minor. Then it goes to D, E flat major, up a half step to a major seven for four measures, and then to a D major seven for four measures. And then that repeats. Yeah, so you send, you, you end up with a, an A section of, of 16 measures, and then a B section of 16 measures. And then I repeated the A section, but I didn't repeat the A section again because I just that thought that was too long. I try to keep my performances short. And you know, people write to me and they say, well, you play too long, you should talk more. And then other people write to me and they say, well, you talk too much. Why don't you play more? You know, so can't keep everybody happy. So I try to get a, a good balance between talking and playing. So I, I don't want to play too much because these are tutorials you know you, I already know I can play and you know I can play you know if you want a solo CD then buy my CD <laughs> or maybe I'll do one of just me performing and you can do, get that and listen to it but anyway I want to teach you things so there's two voicings that I use primarily in this and that was the fourth voicings and then I used a drop two voicing. So the first one was this. Now you're going to be able to tell by the, what's written up there, but you can see that that's a fourth voicing um, in my left hand, and then I have thirds in the right hand. So when I combine them, I get this. Now here, I can't move up because it's not going to sound right to there. But is too dissonant, so I'm going to go up to here, to there. See, so fourth, fourth, third, right? Fourth, 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 third, and then when I go up to here, I'm going to put in G on the bottom, fourth, 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 and then third, and third. See, so that last one doesn't doesn't have the fourth interval above there, like these do. See, it has the fourth, 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 fourth there, and then third, fourth, 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 and then third, and the last one has fourth, 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 third, third. A little different, but it sounds good. Start there, we go up in that same arrangement. On the last one, now I change it to the original configuration. See, so it's going to be fourth, 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 third, third, or fourth, 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 third. So on the last one, or the second part of the opening phrase, you're going to have um, fourth, fourth. And the last one is going to be fourth, 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 third. Did I lose you on that? Doesn't matter. It just, you can read this on the sheet music if you download it. The thing is to get the right sound, and that's the right sound. Back to there, you see. So that's the fourth sound. Now, that's what I used on the first eight measures. Then I went to a drop two. Now, what was that? That would be like taking the chord and filling it out in the right hand like this. With, with six voicings. Well, actually, yeah. I'm doing this. Let's see. It's this. taking that 
that second note there you see from the top and I'm putting it down in the left hand. Now dig how this sounds when I play this. Now this I can keep completely symmetrical. I don't have to worry about the fourth voicings lining up properly with the fourths and the thirds and all that. I just go right up the scale symmetrically like this. Classic sounding, sounds like classical music almost. And actually, uh, this was used by uh, Stravinsky and Petrushka. The nice thing about it has the tenths there, the tenths between the bottom note and the top note, and there's no no doubling at all. So you have this. I could do this and I could make it even denser by adding the additional note in there and have this. Or I could even do this and create a real dissonant sound in the right hand. I call this a chord cluster. The notes are all together. Look at those, those three notes are all together. You know, almost uh, it's a chromatic relationship there, and a, and a half step, and a whole step there. I can get a beautiful sound like this. That's real pretty, particularly on an acoustic piano. Not so much on this one. Okay, so the next part goes to the major of a half step. flat major in there now. Um, so rather than just you know having a chord be there and having it held, I can play some things in, in the left hand and fill in. And then uh, the D major. So that's really interesting to have the minor scale going on for 16 measures and then go up a half step to a major scale. Um, melody being uh, repeats. Back to the D major. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the scale that you can play on to improvise. So it's it's D Dorian. So that's just the D minor. Okay? D minor scale. But it's a D Dorian. So that means it's a C scale starting on D. It's there's no B flat in there. So you know The other scale that I use is uh, two pentatonics. The G pentatonic, which would be this one. If I did this, like that one. Now that means it's G uh, major pentatonic, but I'm starting on the one, two, three, fourth step of it. So G pentatonic is one, two, three, five, six. Starting on the D, I would have D, E, G, A, B. So I'd have this configuration. That configuration. Then the other one that I use, the other pentatonic, would be the D minor pentatonic built on an F major pentatonic. So F, one, two, three, five, six would be the F major pentatonic starting on D. That would be the fifth mode of the F major pentatonic. So it would be D, F, G, A, C, D. So I'd have this. So both of those scales work. Or this one. That's just big intervals. Rather than being chromatic or stepwise, like in a scale, and I use chromatic movement as well. Like You want to use a combination of pentatonic scales, stepwise, and chromatic. That's what all the greats did. I mean, you know, even uh, 
McCoy Tyner, as, as much as he played pentatonic scales, he all used a lot of chromaticism and a lot of scale scale motion, but also pentatonic scales where the intervals are larger. You know, you're playing these kind of. Now, when we get to the major, the E flat major, now this scale is going to be an E flat major scale, but with a Lydian harmony in there. In other words, a sharp four rather than a natural four. For a natural four, the well, you don't want that A flat in there. Why? Because we're in um, D minor, right? So we don't want an A flat in that scale. We want an A natural. And on a D minor scale, we'd have an A natural. So we want to put that A natural into the E flat scale, which makes it Lydian, has a Lydian sound. Whoops. to the D. And that's easy because we're just putting the F sharp in there on the D major rather than the F natural, see? And we're putting the C sharp in too. And so the C natural from the D scale, D minor scale, we're putting an F sharp and a C sharp. We're just altering those those two notes, the F, we're altering it, the F natural to F sharp and the C natural to C sharp. So that's all you have to do, I mean, you just have to play your E flat scale with an A natural in it and alter the D minor scale to by adding the F sharp and the C sharp. So those three scales plus the two pentatonics and you've got everything you need to improvise here. You know, and that's what I did. So check out the improvisation, what I did. Um, keep it simple to start. You know, maybe just uh, stay on the Dorian. Just the F minor pentatonic. Let's see, it'd be this one. It's very similar to a blues scale. Blues scale would have the A flat in it. That one, that A flat in there. Yeah, so a blues scale had one, two, three, four, five, six. Six notes. The uh, pentatonic scale would have five notes. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe that's where they get the penta. Penta being five. There's five notes in the scale. And um, so on the majors, the Lydian scale with an E flat. Now, what is a Lydian scale on an E flat? It's Lydian means four. So it means if you're playing a B flat scale starting on E flat. So B flat has two flats, right? B flat and E flat. So you would just have the B flat scale in there with the E flat. You wouldn't have an A flat in there. A natural, B flat, C, D, E flat. So Lydian. And then D would be. I wouldn't use a Lydian there because I, I think. I prefer to have the, uh, the G in there, but you could use a Lydian. I like, I like the G approaching the F sharp. You see, a lot of what you know you use in scales are a means to an end. Um, they are a way to find a, a good way to approach target tones and, and um, use passing tones. And passing tones and target tones are how you create melodies. So you, you start with the scale as a means. That leads you to what notes to use for the target tones and the passing tones. The target tones being chord tones and the passing tones being the notes in between the uh, target tones, which are the chord tones. You know, like in the case of D, the, top, the chord tones would be D, F sharp, A, and C sharp in the case of D major 7. So the notes in between, like the E and the G, or G sharp or G, and the B in the scale, those would be passing tones to get you to the target tone. So you want the target tones on the strong beat. And that's what creates good melodies. If you really analyze how melodies are created, they have target tones on strong beats. Beats one in particular, 
or maybe D3. I mean, it's not a hard, fa fast rule, but that's a general rule. It's on D1, you want a target tone. Not always. You could have it on the second half of the beat, or, you know, there's always exceptions. But I'm saying a general rule, for most purposes, with even simple tunes, you're going to have that rule work. So, that's it for this video. Um, write to me with questions or comments. This is OBS Studio is new for me. I'm still learning it. I'm still trying to get it to work better. I uh, hope you like it. And I hope you like the Jazz Ranch. We'll have a sign off now. And thanks for tuning in. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch. Thanks so much for joining me on this exploration of a little song called Little Sunflower. And please write to me. I'd love to hear from you. I always respond to all comments if you give me time. And until next time, in the words of the Cowboys, swing loose. And we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.